the triumph of individualism and the defeat of tribalism. For most Westerners, it's hard to even imagine a time when life was tribal. Yet small collective groups where everybody had a role and everybody knew each other were the norm for most of our history. The identity and survival of the collective was what bonded people together. Nowadays you'll have a hard time finding those kinds of tribes in the West. We barely know our neighbors. We speculate about their lifestyles and might awkwardly start a conversation when stuck together in the elevator. But that's pretty much about it. There was a time where the village, the group, the collective was an extension of your family. Nowadays there is no extension of that family. Nowadays even the blood relatives within a family are also broken in many individual parts. Human beings have pretty much lived in tribes and small collective groups till the discovery of agriculture. Hunter-gatherers would move from place to place to find the best conditions to live and hunt depending on the climate. Agriculture have made the tribes more sedentary and from that the birth of some of the greatest civilization of our past. Those civilization dynasties are not all that bad. They have brought us amazing art, knowledge, culture and technology. But they always end up corrupt from the inside or the outside. Or both. The greed and affluence make men weak and complacent. What was once a great civilization ends collapsing into smaller parts once more. A civilization is born stoic and dies epicurean. Will Durant. Christianity for most of the Middle Age has kept a certain sense of group and identity for a lot of people. It was just not a small tribe anymore, it was a huge group. And even though people might have lived in big medieval cities and there was a huge gap between the peasants and the nobility, we could argue that there was still a certain tradition of collective and striving for the identity of the group and the nation. We could say that there was still nobility in nobility. Royalty was always at the risk of a revolution or an overthrow, manipulated from the inside, the outside or both. However, the slow end of the Middle Age came about with two major events, the Reformation and the Renaissance. Both events have made the I so much more powerful and hereafter the we started getting weaker and weaker. The Reformation and especially Calvinism has enhanced the emergence of capitalism. In his book, The Protestant Ethic and the Spirit of Capitalism, Max Weber shows that the successful and the rich tend to be Protestant. For the Calvinist, you are predestined to one of the them or one of the chosen few. However, it is not something you know. For them, human beings live in a constant state of anxiety. Work needs to be a buffer against this constant state of angst. The Protestants also use work as an ascetic practice for the greater glory of God. Idleness, laziness, hedonism and carnal pleasures are condemned. This is not a judgment made on Protestants and their values. This is just an observation. Protestants leave their spirituality and relationship with God through work, not through material accumulation. Christianity did not have the same concept of salvation and damnation. Work was not as important insofar as wealth was condemned by Christianity. It only makes sense that the Protestants were much more materially and professionally successful than their Christian contemporaries. Basic capitalism is the search for profit through labor. It was what made Protestants so successful and therefore separated from the mass. A hierarchy was born. Before there was the nobility, the knight, the clergy and the rest, peasants and tradesmen. Those were categories you stayed in for the duration of your life. The reformation started changing that and the renaissance nailed the ethos in the coffin. Before the Renaissance, man was conscious, aware of himself only as a member of a race, people, party, family or corporation. Jacob Burckhardt, 19th century Swiss historian. The Renaissance created the foundation of a modern world. During this period, the concept of the universal man and individualist was born. Man who seeks posterity and legacy through his own accomplishments, through art, through scientific discoveries, through innovation, through seeking of truth. During those bygone times, society was progressively secularized. God took a back seat and the individual took the lead. 
Where has God gone? He cried. I shall tell you. We have killed him. You and I. Nietzsche. Please comment. Write down below your struggles and what subjects you want to learn about. Please help us make better content for you guys. Subscribe and click the bell button to be notified. Stay in touch with us. Videos come out every week. Don't miss them. Thanks a lot for your support. Get one or more of our ebooks. Some are free, some are almost free. Either way, you will benefit tremendously from them. Check the link in the description box below and don't forget to be inspired and inspire.